It's 10.30 Saturday morning. We're up on the Pennines, not Sarah's near Huddersfield, about half a mile from Scammondon Dam. These are the Cone Valley Beagles. They're anxious to get underway and start hunting in spite of the howling wind. Every Saturday and sometimes midweek from September till the end of March, these hounds, men and boys, usually in that order, hunt hares. And they're off, the beagle pack. Each of them with one end parting the thick moorland grass sniffing for a scent, the other end wagging with anticipation. Behind them, the huntsman, Graham O'Brien, a man whose hunting instinct is almost as keen as the hounds. And behind him, a young man who'll keep the tradition alive well into the next century, his son, Nigel. Well, the sudden change in pace means a hare has been scented. Theoretically, beagles hunt painstakingly. Not so fast that they outrun the field, who are full of foot, well, that's the theory. We all know hares are very nippy little creatures. Well, these hounds chase them and catch them. We're here to find out how on earth men, boys and women, well wrapped and wearing clod-hopping footwear, can hope to keep pace with the pack. Up the hill and over the hill. And as we reach the top, well, they're streaming down the other side into the valley. So how do you keep up with them? Well, we were fast discovering that for your average hunt follower, it's very simple. You can't, so you don't. You use your brains and more or less stand still. These are experienced hunt followers and they know that if a hare pursued by a hound sets off down into the valley, more than likely, before it reaches the bottom, it'll change direction and come back up the hill. Something to do with hares having long back legs. They prefer running uphill. Well, humans don't. So those that can sit still and relax and watch the hunt. What exactly is happening now? I mean, well, the hounds have checked on the road, and yeah. the scent's not as good on the road as in the fields. So the hounds, the huntsman's gone down, and they'll cast around the road, and they'll find where the hares come off the road, and then of course the hounds will carry on, carry on with the Pick scent. Pick the scent That's up, right, up yeah, here. Right. Hopefully up here. We all. Because yeah. there's no way we can keep we up with them, is there? We can't over there, no, obviously. So it's using brains rather than speed? That's right. You can't hope to keep up with the hounds in there, of course, so you cut the corners and try and find where you think the air's going to go. Right. Yeah. As we watch the hounds hunt to a song from the huntsman, Graham O'Brien. Three times this course she led the pack without one single rest When the huntsman he admitted that she deserved the best and so did every sportsman who had gathered here that day and everyone stood silent as he sounded gone away so raise aloft your glasses come give a thousand cheer to a true and worthy sportsman and those arms we love so dear and long may we remember the sport that we had seen Provided by the beagles and the huntsmen can green. How the bears run love to hear Those merry hounds draw near And each one knows the huntsman drowns in crime Here winds his mellow horn It re-echoes in the horn And the child on his wish to build It's now one o'clock and we've been hearing after the hounds for two and a half hours. In that time, six or has it been seven hares have been scented and hunted. The length of chase has varied. Sometimes they've overlapped and for a moment the packs become confused. The hares have been very clever, backtracking and zigzagging. The last chase was successful, though not for the hare, it was caught. We didn't see the kill, but the huntsman did. Graham says it was a good kill. The hounds had worked together well and death had been instantaneous. Of course, there are many who would say that no matter how quick a tired hare being torn limb from limb by a pack of hounds is a strange kind of sport. For certainly the hounds look pleased with themselves. For them, for the seven men and boys of the hunt, and for the 30 or so followers, it had been a fine morning's hunt. The hounds didn't want it to end. For them, it was water and a rest in the back of a van. For us, 
a much more satisfactory conclusion. Food and, of course, a drink. Gentlemen, that was a, a lot of fun this morning, a bit of hard work. We covered a lot of miles, the hounds did, okay. but not a big area. Is that sort of normal? Well, uh, air tents are running a circle, I know. But it's surprising how many miles we have covered, even though the circles seem to have been uh, not a, a large radius, but uh, if we'd had a pedometer on our leg, on average, a day's beagling, huntsman can cover on a full day. We've only been out half a day this morning, up to 25 miles. How many hounds do we do we have this morning? Sixteen and a half couples. I don't know. In plain that. numbers, <laughs> that is 33 hounds. 33. Um, is, that, is that normal? That's the usual number, is it? Oh, we've got to call a strong pack out this morning. Why do you do it? What, what's in it for you? What's your enjoyment? Well, the thrill for me is that I work inside all the week. And then I come out on a Saturday, get to loads of fresh air and follow the hounds, you know, the thrill and the cry of the hounds. And then we have a good night after a good pint of beer. It's seeing, the, it's seeing the dogs working, it's work. the hounds. It's hound work for me. I'm out, I'm out doing it all week, I build her. And uh, it's the pleasure, the more involved with the pack you are, the more pleasure you get out of it. Because you know each hound, you know each one, how it's bred. And you say, that's just doing like it grandmother did or it parent. You resemble them like human beings, you know. Well, I mean, what sort of people are you? Because I, I always imagine that there's a certain amount of snobbishness yeah. involved in hunting. Well, it isn't. No, there's people in every way of life. There's uh, engineers, uh, company directors, bank managers, window cleaners, labourers, bankers, bricklayers. Yes, it's a sport for everyone. It's not two o'clock yet, and today's rather a special day here at Nonceras. Almost half the clientele are visitors to the Pennine Moorland from the rolling ploughlands of Lincolnshire, from south-east Lincolnshire, in fact, from Spilsby, Skegness, Horncastle and Wainfleet. The afternoon's going to belong to the East Lynx Harehounds, to the beautiful hound music of their 11-couple Bassett pack. What is the big difference in hunting with beagles and Bassets? Well, basically, they do exactly the same job. Um, basset hounds are thicker set, bigger voiced and, well, I think closer hunting. Graham might disagree. What do you mean by closer hunting? Well, the scent lower so they stick to the line of the hair. At a, when a hair jinks, uh, the beagles tend to flash on over it, whereas the bassets will follow her as if they're on rails, hopefully, ideally, isn't it? Don't they have problems with all the stone walls? I mean, they're very low slung animals, aren't they? Mm. Well. It's something we used to worry about, but the scent's so much better on, on this moorland than we have at home that uh, they just drive on and they get over somehow. Now, home being Lincolnshire, why why are you here? Because it's so, so good for it? Well, I think largely because uh, Lincolnshire is a, a land of very rich farmland with a lot of plough and a lot of greens. And you come here onto the moorland, and it's a totally different country. So you can see your hounds working under completely different conditions, which is rather nice for us. The um, hounds enjoy it, do they? They seem to. So, pints, pasties, pie and peas consumed, tally-ho, and off we go again. A fresh pack, and we are refreshed. And anyway, Bassett hounds are much heavier, and the legs are quite short. So, keeping up with the pack to see them and the huntsmen working together shouldn't be too much of a problem. The sun's out now, and so are about 50 followers. And huntsman Paddy Castles has done the decent thing and headed off with his pack towards the dam at Scamondon. If things go according to plan, spectators will be able to stay near the main road and watch the hares, hopefully pursued by Bassett Hounds and Paddy, hunted up the hill towards them. But before long, the first belling sounds, the pack funnel off in a chase and we're hunting again. This time to the accompaniment of the Beagle's kennelman, 82-year-old Harrison Hoyle. I mind the day when jolly first sounded in my ears. It was in the days of long ago. Back in my solid years, the day was fine, the scent was good, 
the hounds were a splendid show. The world was fair and I was young when I first heard Talio. The world was fair and I was young when I first heard Talio. Isn't it funny how time flies when you're enjoying yourself? It's past half past four already. Again, there's been one kill, but Bassets are deceptively quick and our cameras couldn't keep up with them. We've hunted down to the dam, we've hunted up from the dam, across the road, back and forth, umpteen times. The wind's still as strong, so are the hounds and paddy, but we, the followers, are getting very tired. But now my pals, I'm growing old, and youngsters pass me by. But yet I love the music still of hounds when in full cry. Then over more and over fell, the winter winds do blow. I'll do my best to hobble on. To the cry of Talio. I do my best to hobble on to the cry of Talio. Hey ho, many a year ago, I used to gallop with the best, the cry of Talio. At the end, there was a very long chase on yes, that, and you got the hair at the end. We saw some good handwork, thanks to Paddy. Right. And, of course, at the end, there was a kill. But that's not what it's about, though, is oh, it? Oh, not at all, no. No, no, the fun is watching the hounds work out the line of the hair, because she's on her territory. Would you... And they, 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 would you rather that there wasn't a kill? I mean, that's, that's a, a difficult... rather negatively phrased question, but... It does hounds good. Every so often. It does hounds a lot of good. They know what their job is. Just every now and then. Yes. Yeah, I'm a jolly 